ve katılımcılarımıza hoş geldiniz demek istiyorum. E, kısaca kendimi tanıtmak istiyorum. İsmim Mehmet Vaat, Salt Gençlik Derneği Başkanıyım. Aynı zamanda Uşak Üniversitesi İletişim Fakültesi Yeni Medya Lisans son sınıf öğrencisi ve mezunuyum. E, bugün canlı yayınımızı sevgili arkadaşım Caydan'la birlikte moderasyonunu sağlayacağız. E, sözü çok fazla uzatmadan kendisini tanıtmak üzere Caydan'a veriyorum. Akabinde söz Büyükelçimizde. Sayın Büyükelçim, değerli arkadaşlar, hepiniz hoş geldiniz. İsmim Cavidan Güzel, Pamukkale Üniversitesi Erasmus Ofisi personeliyim. Aynı zamanda gençlik çalışanıyım. Salt Gençlik Derneği'nde proje koordinatörlüğü görevini üstleniyorum. Güzel bir yayın olmasını diliyorum. Sözü sevgili Büyükelçimize vermek istiyorum. Sayın Büyükelçim, söz sizde. Thank you very, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mehmet and Tavina. Thank you for the for this opportunity. Um, it's great to be with this organization, the youth organization, and to answer your questions. I don't really know what you what you expect. Um, I know you have some interest in um, in digital issues and uh, modern technology and things like that. I'm happy to talk about it if you want. I'm also happy to answer any questions that you may have. So uh, simply let me know. How, how would you like to structure this to make it useful for you? Çok teşekkür ediyorum öncelikle. E, sorularımız var. Katılımcılarımızdan başvuruları esnasında sorular aldık. Bu sorular üzerinden eğer sizin için de uygunsa e, yayını sürdürelim istiyoruz. İsterseniz çok e, fazla uzatmadan ilk sorudan başlayarak ben e, sorularımı size yöneltmek istiyorum. Tabii sizin için de uygun. As you wish. Yeah, sure. 2016, 2016 yılından bu yana Türkiye'de görev yapıyorsunuz ve görev yaptığınız sürede de Türkiye'de çok sevildiniz. Geçtiğimiz günlerde de Mısır'a atandınız. Öncelikle yeni göreviniz umarım hayırlı olur. Ve Türkiye'de bulunduğunuz sürede hem siz hem eşiniz çok sevildiniz. Yine bahsetmek istediğim üzere. Göreve başlamadan önce Türkiye'de bu kadar çok ilgi göreceğinizi ve sevileceğinizi düşünüyor muydunuz? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, I think I have a very good uh, communications uh, department and people who who do a great job <laughs> in, uh, in promoting not me but the European Union and the European delegation. Um, so uh, before coming to Turkey, um, I didn't have much. Uh, I didn't have much knowledge about the country. I've been here uh, as a tourist in Istanbul and uh, in places where tourists normally go in Turkey um, for a short period of time. Um, and But I have been dealing with the Middle East in the last 30 years, so Turkey was always there on the horizon in the north of the Middle East, uh, both in terms of geography but also in terms of history. Um, so Turkey always played an important role in when you, when you want to understand the politics of the Middle East and when you understand the politics of, of, of, the, of the Eastern Mediterranean, obviously. You cannot um, you cannot avoid Turkey. You cannot ignore Turkey. So it's it's it's it's, it's there. Um, coming here, uh, it was a great surprise. I mean, it was a surprise how overwhelming the country is, how overwhelming the the size of the country is, the beauty of the country, the diversity of the country, the hospitality of the people, the, the friendliness of the people. Um, so that that came as a that came as a very pleasant surprise, let's put it that way. And uh, also the, the engagement that we have had, uh, thanks to my colleagues in the delegation, of course, know the, the, um, the country very well. Um, we have been to many, many places where tourists normally do not go. And we have uh, seen things that tourists do not see. And we have eaten things that tourists very often do not get to, to, to eat because we have been to, to, to, to, to far away places. And we made a point from the beginning not to spend all our time in Ankara or in Istanbul for that matter, uh, because we believe, and we were right, I think, to believe that Turkey is much bigger um, and more diverse than, than simply these two cities. So um, we, we had a great time, I must say, and we still have a great time because we still have uh, two months and a, and a bit to go. And I really hope we, I, we can still visit a few things that we have not visited yet that have been on our list, but as you know, like everybody else our traveling in turkey was interrupted by a little virus um, so we could not really 
uh, go and see everything as we as we wanted. So we will we still have to be, have to do some catching up in the next few weeks, and hope we can still uh, do a lot. But so as so to answer your your question in uh, in, in, in short, uh, as, as it, it was a it was a big surprise, and as I said, a very pleasant surprise. Really. Çok teşekkür ediyorum. Sizin gibi e, önemli bir değeri biz Türkiye'den uğurlayacak olduğumuz için gerçekten e, açıkçası üzgünüz. Ama e, yine soruma devam etmek istiyorum. Avrupa Birliği vatandaşı bir birey olarak ve de bir büyük elçi olarak Türkiye'de e, geçirdiğiniz süre çerçevesinde e, yani Türkiye'de olmak sizin için nasıl bir uygu? Bunu bizimle paylaşabilir misiniz? Well, I'm not only an EU citizen, so I'm a citizen, I'm also an Austrian citizen, as you may know. Uh, and uh, we have had a long lasting relationship uh, with, uh, uh, with Turkey and the Ottoman Empire. So Turkey has always been in, in, the, in the history of Turkey, has always been in the background. Um, and it has been, uh, as you may know, a relationship of 400 years of war, but also a relationship of uh, very close, being very close allies in the, in the First World War. And I always tell the story that um, you know the, the regiment that I served in in the Austrian army um, has uh, is, is following the tradition of a regiment of the Austrian Hungarian army that served in 1916 and 1917 with the Ottoman army in Palestine uh, in the Gaza Strip. So we have had a very close relationship as well, and a very uh, and a very important relationship. And obviously um, today we have again a very important relationship in the sense that you know Turkey is the most important business partner of the, of the European Union trading partner many European uh, EU citizens come here for holidays and I hope we'll start again very soon to come for people to come um, there are many Turkish citizens that move to the European Union uh, member states um, on the weekend I came back from uh, I came back from Germany from Dusseldorf and I was surprised to see that that evening there were five flights uh, uh, leaving within the span of one hour uh, to five different cities in Turkey because people were coming home for summer holidays or meeting the families or visiting the families for summer holidays. So there is a very close personal relationship between um, European Union citizens, member states and, and Turkey and, and its citizens. So it's, um, it's, it, it, is, it is obviously uh, not only as a new citizen uh, it's important but also looking at the relationship is important for the EU ambassador here. Uh, Turkey is a candidate country for membership in the European Union and of course that defines more or less the role that we are playing here as delegation because our main role is to prepare Turkey on Turkish administration to Turkish uh, structures for membership in the European Union. Um, we have we are in this period which is called pre-accession um, and we have many projects and programs across the country, from Edirne to Van and from Samsung to Antalya. Uh, we have projects everywhere uh, to prepare the country for membership. We work with most, almost every ministry, every uh, municipality. Wherever you go, you find a project that has been supported, funded or done, uh, done by the European or in cooperation with the Turkish authorities. And I've really um, enjoyed this cooperation and I really value this cooperation, but also I really value um, the business links between Turkey and the European Union. And again, as EU ambassador, it's very important to speak with the business community. Um, we had uh, webinars yesterday. And after this one, late in the evening, I will have a webinar uh, with the Chamber of Commerce in, in Hatay um, because we want to really uh, emphasize this business link, which is, in my view, a very strong relationship with the EU. We look at the figures, 50% of uh, Turkish foreign trade goes to, uh, to the European Union, or is with the European Union, about 80%, 60, sorry, 70% of foreign direct investment comes from the European Union. So it's a very close uh, relationship um, uh, between the two. And of course, as, as EU delegations, EU ambassador, it's very important to make sure that this relationship flows without any problems. I give you an example. At the beginning of the um, of the Corona crisis, many countries closed their border, and one of the roles here was to make sure that goods can flow across the border, that trade can go across border, land border with Bulgaria, land border with with Greece, to make sure that truck drivers can go, that visas are being issued um, by our member states. So there was a lot of um, uh, I think a lot of work uh, done in that respect to make sure that this relationship continues or 
uh, we we we we uh, repatriated people, European citizens, from here back to the European member states, and we, because Turkey is part of the civil protection mechanism, uh, we also enabled Turkish citizens to come back from Latin America uh, just a few weeks ago with that with, through that mechanism. So, uh, just to show you, in a very practical manner, uh, how how close this relationship and and and think, despite all the political problems that you can read in the newspapers and that you, I'm sure you follow on TV. Um, uh, I would say you have a, a layer of problems, but below you have a very solid base of cooperation and, uh, and, uh, between Turkey and the European Union. Kesinlikle vermiş olduğunuz değerli bilgiler için de aynı şekilde teşekkür etmek istiyorum. Ee, süreç içerisinde görev, e, daha doğrusu görev süreciniz boyunca da e, sarf etmiş olduğunuz emekleri biz e, yakınen takip ettik. Öncelikle bu girişimleriniz için de ayrıyeten çok teşekkür etmek istiyorum. Hem e, sivil toplum camiası adına, hem gençlik çalışmaları adına, hem de yerelde e, gerçekleştirilen, yerel ve uluslararası boyutta gerçekleştirilen işbirlikleri için de ayrıyeten teşekkür etmek istiyorum. E, biliyorsunuz ki dünya dijital bir dönüşümün eşiğinde, özellikle bu korona e, pandemisiyle birlikte süreç daha da e, hız kazandı. Ve bu dijital dönüşüme Avrupa Birliği ülkeleri ve diğer ülkeler e, sizce hazırlıklı mı? Bu konudaki öngörünüz nedir? Well, all I can tell you is they better be ready. Uh, because we have, uh, I think we have gone through a very steep learning curve in the last uh, you know, three months, four months. Meetings like we have now would not have taken place four months ago, three months ago. Meetings like this would have taken somewhere in a big meeting room, in a big hall. Um, we would have had lots of coffee to drink, lots of tea to drink. So that's what I miss here when we talk on the, um, on the, uh, on, on, on, on, on the screen. Um, but I think many people have gotten adjusted to this, accustomed to this. Universities are running their courses uh, via this medium. Although, I mean, to be honest, uh, universities also had podcasts and YouTube uh, lectures also, also in the past. So they were really at the forefront of that. And in the European Union, um, uh, so already when the new commission came in in December, they, sh they had two very big programs. Uh, one was uh, the Green Deal, so uh, uh, supporting the environment and making sure that the European continent will be cl climate neutral uh, by 2050. Uh, but at the same time, um, uh, we also proposed the digitalization or the digital transformation of the economy. So this has to do with, with many, many different things. So this has to do with uh, ra ranging from negative things like uh, dealing with, uh, with cyber security and cyber crime, uh, but also having better, better artificial intelligence, understanding about artificial intelligence. Um, there's a big program running by the European Union in promoting supercomputing. So have this, this supercomputers being built, quantum computers being built. There's a lot of research going into that. Um, but also at the same time, a lot of investment in people, young people. So basically to make them, to, to enhance the, the digital skills of, of people in schools. And this was, I think, accelerated during the, uh, during the uh, Corona crisis. In many European countries, through the schools, now laptops or iPads or whatever uh, means of communications we have is being distributed so kids can learn much faster uh, how to use this, this technology. Um, and we also have made it a big, po a big point uh, of the recovery. I mean, as you know, after, after the COVID crisis hit um, most countries around the world, most countries imposed very severe restrictions in order to protect the, uh, the health system, in order to make sure that not too many people get infected or need to be treated in hospitals. So a lot of lock uh, so-called lockdowns, curfews, uh, interruptions of supply chains, interruptions of production happened. Um, and one of the ways of addressing um, um, this economic downturn or this economic blow is the digitalization, digital transformation of the economy. So there are not only risks and, and challenges and not only um, negative aspects of, of what we're going through at the moment, there are also opportunities. There are opportunities for young people to learn, to expand, to move into different type of technology, different type of education. Uh, opportunities for the business community because you need to develop um, new procedures, new structures, new processes, uh, have ideas for, for new, um, for new um, uh, you know, equipment, machinery, technology, 
So there's a lot of opportunity for, for people. And, and, and as you know, um, there are quite a few companies already now that because of this situation, because of people moving to the digital way of, of operating, have made a lot of profit, have lost a lot of money. I think the, I think the, the platform, what we are on now, is one of those examples. I mean, Zoom has, uh, has made a lot of, um, a lot, a lot of uh, I, think, I think, good, good income and profit because of, uh, of, of, of, this, of this need to use this type of platform. Uh, there are others, sure. So um, this digitalization is certainly was wanted already a half a year ago and was accelerated because of the situation that we're in. And as I said, uh, business community, universities, students, uh, young people should really grab this opportunity and get, and, and, and, and get something out of it. Kesinlikle katılıyorum. Ee, ben bir yeni medya lisans mezunu olarak bunu açık yüreklikle söyleyebilirim ki Avrupa Birliği'nin e, çalışmalarında dijitalleşmeye verdiği önemi aslında biz biraz Türkiye olarak e, geriden takip ediyoruz. Bu konuda Avrupa Birliği'nin de keza sağlamış olduğu destekler ve çalışmalar e, olursa da e, olacak olursa da zaten e, çokça gençler ve alandaki kişiler bunlardan faydalanıyor. E, Katılıyorum ve çok teşekkür ediyorum cevabınız için. Bir sonraki soru için soruyu e, arkadaşım Caydan'a veriyorum. Sözü. Teşekkür ederim Mehmet. Ben biraz daha konuyu farklı bir e, duruma getireceğim. Bütçeyle alakalı olacak. Avrupa Birliği'nin eğitim gençlik programları kapsamında Türkiye'ye ayrılan bir bütçe var. E, bu bütçenin Covid sonrası durumu ne olacak? Bu konudaki öngörüler, öngörüleriniz nelerdir? Teşekkür ederim. Before I answer your question, let me let me make one more remark on, on Mehmet's uh, earlier point. Um, we had yesterday we had a good uh, discussion between the the digital Turkey platform and digital Europe uh, on on these issues. And I think one of the interesting statements that I heard uh, mainly from the business community was that Turkey has a number of strong advantages. One advantage is a young population. Another advantage is a, a a, real, a, a well educated population and you have a very technology savvy population so you have also the necessary infrastructures i would not be too um, i would not be too skeptical as as as i think i heard mehmet a little bit uh, when he talked about the preparedness for all this i think turkey is is i think in a relatively good position uh, in attracting uh, business in that field uh, because of of uh, of the of of the population the young population well-educated population and a very resourceful and skilled uh, business community. So I would not be too, um, uh, too, too skeptical about this. I think uh, there's a lot uh, Turkey can offer. And as I said, uh, people need to grab the opportunity. And I don't think Turks are shy in grabbing opportunities. So uh, I'm pretty sure uh, something positive will, will come out of this. The, the point, on, uh, the point on, on the budget, um, let me make a couple of remarks. First of all, um, we have a number of youth support programs. Uh, one is, I think, extremely well known. This is Erasmus. I mean, you yourself, uh, you, you know very well about it. Um, and this program has evolved in the last 30, 32 years. So it's no longer Erasmus, as you know, it's now Erasmus Plus. And this Erasmus Plus is very important because it's no longer scholarships for university students. It's now scholarships or stipends or support for any young people who want to get a new skill. And the skill can be, of course, academia. This can be a new job. This can be a new business, a new, uh, you know, a new experience. Basically, if you want to work for an NGO, for society, if you want to, do, if you want to be an apprentice, apprentice for for a little while, uh, so Erasmus is there. And we have also come to the conclusion, uh, and I must say this is one of the very few areas, areas where uh, member states and the European Parliament is willing to give even more money uh, than we have spent before, because we've come to the conclusion that it has been a very successful program in many aspects. Yes, it has been successful in helping young people, but it also has been successful in breaking down barriers and walls and creating understanding between uh, societies. Uh, in my view, my very personal view, it is one of the most important antidotes to racism and to uh, xenophobia and to Islamophobia and to many other of these negative trends that we experience nowadays by letting people get to know each other, 
by understanding that the other is not much different than your, yourself. And I think taking away the fear of the other is the most successful um, part of this program. And therefore, the decision was taken in preparation of our next budget. Um, it was taken to double the amount of money available for uh, Erasmus. I hope, I mean, the budget has not been decided yet. Member states still need to agree on a, on a very big package. Um, that is being debated by member states will, will, will have to be adopted by the European Parliament, but the proposal is there and I hope it really will, it will be adopted. At the same time, you may know we have a second program which is called the, um, which is called the Jean Monnet program. It's for, it's for uh, doing a, a, a master's degree or a secondary, a secondary degree at university. Uh, that will also continue. I, I, I'm, I have not seen any any grand plans of, of, of enhancing it and enlarging it for the simple reason that you may know we have a, we had a number of, um, of, of people who couldn't take up their, their, their studies in 2016 and 17 because of the, um, of the political situation at the time, but we have, we've overcome this now and people are now doing the, the, their program. So I, again, it's one of the most successful programs. It's a very prestigious program. Uh, many people applying for for that, um, and I really hope that we we can expand that too. But I have no I have no real figures for that. I have, although I must say, I have um, a strong confirmation and or indications that the budget for Erasmus will be will be doubled. Thank you for your reports. The old Erasmus Erasmus is now a worker. Thank you for your reports. Thank you very much. Uzun yıllardır Türkiye'desiniz ve Türk öğrencileri de bu konuda gözlem gözlem yapabilme şansı bulabildiniz. Sizce yani Avrupa Birliği'nin gözünden Türk öğrencilerinin eğitimleri konusunda artı ve eksiler nelerdir? Teşekkür ederim. I must say, uh, uh, since I have kids myself, uh, one has finished university, the other one is still in university, I, I can compare a little bit. Uh, and I must say, I, I am impressed in Turkey with the services that are being offered to, uh, to, to students. I know, I mean, you, you cannot study in your hometown, you, you have to be, you have to apply and then you get assigned a uh, university. So you have to travel and you have to move. But, but the infrastructure, I mean, the dormitories, the uh, the, the, the whole the whole support to Turkish students in, in my view and, and of course for that matter also for uh, students that come uh, uh, with the Erasmus program from the European Union is is, is really great and, uh, and I've spoken to many European students who came here who are impressed uh, with a the how people are getting welcomed here immediately included here either by the students uh, associations or by the, by, the, by the teachers and professors by university find accommodation. So I think you have a very strong um, infrastructure. What I, what I find interesting, uh, which is a difference to, um, to, to, to European universities, I have not seen uh, a long lasting bond between university students and their universities after they leave. So this concept of um, alumni um, I, I, I think there's still a lot of things can be done uh, because I think this also um, strengthens the, the universities in the long run because they, they know to keep it, they know exactly what students are doing afterwards. They can see if, if the training that is providing and the education is providing is, is successful, they get a feedback, what you do with your education. So I've, um, I've, I've always suggested this to, to universities to, and some, many of them are doing this already now, but um, in Europe, it has been a very long lasting tradition to have these this alumni clubs. The other thing I like here very much is um, nothing more can be done, is the link between university and uh, business or, or technology. So very often you find uh, techno parks uh, established by universities and then you know, and, and, and either professors or teachers, but, but also very often students have the opportunity of, uh, particularly when they, they do uh, apply technology, they can immediately see what they're researching and what they're doing if this, ha if this can be used also in a commercial sense. I mean, start a startup company or a company that, that can be, that, that can, you know, start new business. Uh, is, is, is, I think is a great idea and I know many universities um, are doing so. so you have a lot of, of, of interesting uh, advantages that, uh, that, that, that I think you really should capitalize on and you should expand. So uh, 
I think university life here is great. I, I wish we could uh, attract more European Union uh, students to come here. At the moment, look at the figures, you have about half a million um, Turkish students who have gone to European universities, uh, uh, to universities in the European Union, but only 50,000 have, uh, have come here. So um, together with the, with the national agency and with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we want to attract more um, European students to come here to, make, to take advantages of, of, of what, what the university system he has to offer. Teşekkür ederim. Kesinlikle Erasmus Plus programı öğrencilere çok farklı kapılar açabiliyor ve onların genellikle ilk defa uçağa binmesini, ilk defa yurt dışı deneyimi yaşamasını sağlıyor. Jan Monet programı da aynı şekilde öğrenciler çok güzel bir kariyerine başlangıç yapıyor Jan Monet programıyla. Ben biraz da ona değinmek istiyorum. Jan Monet programında çok fazla ilgi gösteriliyor ve herkes ilanların açılmasını dört gözle bekliyor bu şekilde. Türkiye için ayrılan Jan Monet kontenjanının arttırılması söz konusu mu? Bununla ilgili bir çalışma yapılacak mı ileriki dönemde? Teşekkür ederim. I know there is a great demand and uh, you have a very, I think, a very competitive approach to this. I mean, there are always there are selections uh, that, that you need to go through to, to go there. So I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, from now until uh, 24, we have allocated some uh, 18 million euros for the Chamonix program. But that's for the moment, as, it's, as it stands, as, as I mentioned before, as I said, Erasmus for sure will be increased. Uh, Jean Monnet, uh, the recommendations from from here is and the recommendations from the from the agency and from the from the foreign minister. I'm sure would be the same uh, to to to to to increase the number of people. But as I said, um, no decision on, on this has been taken. But it's certainly an, a, an interesting proposal. I mean, this this this is how I understand your question that you would like to see uh, more more of, of, of places for for for Jean Monnet students. Teşekkür ederim. Şimdi yine ben sözü devralırken Erasmus Plus programından bahsedeceğim. Erasmus Plus programı bildiğiniz üzere 2021 ile 2027'lik yeni süreçte çok farklı bir değişime uğrayacak. Bundan da sıkça Ulusal Ajansı olsun, AB Başkanı olsun bahsediliyor. Bu yeni programda bizlerin neler bekliyor? Ne gibi yeniliklerle karşılaşacağız? Bunun hakkında bizimle biraz ilgilerinizi paylaşabilirseniz çok memnun oluruz. Um, let me make a couple of points here. Um, one is uh, lots of Erasmus students were concerned that because of Corona, uh, there will be an impact on, on the way they can um, do their studies. We have been here, uh, we want to be as flexible as possible. Let me just repeat this, that if somebody has a place and had to leave because the university closed down, we want to protect that place and, and, uh, and, and, and the person, the student to go back uh, once the university reopens. If somebody has already spent money, we will try everything we can to reimburse that, uh, that, that person. My recommendation is also to get in touch, whoever has a question here, get in touch with, the, with, with your Erasmus coordinator, with your university, either here in Turkey or the university that receives you in the European Union, because often you have different, um, a different approach from university to university. Some have closed down, some do uh, some work on via the internet, some actually have resumed uh, their classes. So you really need to uh, know what your own university and the university you want to go to is, is doing in order to, to, to, to know. Changes, um, I mean, the most important change, we talked about it already a little earlier, is when we moved from Erasmus to Erasmus Plus, uh, that we now include not only university students, but also young people who want to spend some time um, uh, with an organization in the broadest uh, sense of the definition, with an organization in Europe to learn a skill, a trade, uh, to be an apprentice, to work in a, in a, maybe in a partner organization, in a partner NGO, um, uh, different things uh, to pursue some research or studies you can do uh, whatever you, you like more or less uh, once you have been accepted by the agency uh, and by your by, by the partner organization in, uh, in in the European Union so that that is clear and and I think the most important um, also difference to, to the previous Erasmus uh, years is that we have more places available as we had will have available as we had in the previous period 
Um, so I would, I, I, I, um, we, I really need to, I really would like to encourage people to, to make use of those opportunities, um, despite all the uncertainties that we see at the moment, but uh, this will go away um, for, for sure, hopefully soon. And then the academic year 2020-21 will start in October. And I understand for many universities, they have to plan to restart as planned uh, in October this year uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the new academic uh, period. So um, take the opportunities. Söylediklerinize katılıyorum. Bu dönemde maalesef öğrenciler bir talihsizlik yaşadı Erasmus konusunda. Gittikleri ülkelerde eğitimlere devam edip, edemeyip geri döndüler maalesef. Fakat mağduriyetleri en güzel şekilde giderildi. Özellikle ben kendi çalıştığım alanda buna çok rahat bir şekilde şahit oldum. Faturaları olsun, uçak biletleri olsun. Ve öğrencileri bu konuda biraz da motive etmeye çalışıyoruz. Bu durumun geçici olduğunu sürekli bildiriyoruz. Ee, tabii öğrenciler gitmeden önce çok yoğun bir süreçten geçiyorlar. İşte vize, pasaport süreci olsun, kabul süreçleri birazcık sıkıntılı. Ee, ben birazcık ona dönmek istiyorum. Ee, sure. Erasmus hmm. ve ESC programı kapsamında öğrenciler vize almak için uğraşıyorlar ve bazıları gerçekten sıkıntılar yaşıyor. İki ay bekledikleri oluyor. Ee, vize süreci konusunda bir kolaylaştırıcı çalışma yapmayı planlıyor musunuz? Teşekkür ederim. Well, there are there are several aspects here. One is that, as you may know, Turkey and the European Union we uh, we are we are discussing and planning visa liberalisation. So once this is happening, this whole question will uh, uh, will be will be no longer relevant. Uh, so this is for the Schengen area uh, where we where we uh, where we discuss it. But but there's still a few things, a few steps to be taken. So we don't have it yet in in form of of, of a general visa liberalisation. Now. We are fully aware of the situation, and I can tell you whenever a student comes to us uh, and says, "Look, I have a place university has a university this part of the university has confirmed my place. I have the confirmation by the um, by the national agency, but I can't get the visa for whatever reasons then we normally we help we try to help i mean as European Union delegation, as you may know, we are not uh, dealing with visas, so the EU, EU, i mean the EU delegation doesn't issue visas. Uh, but we, we also we also we also can try and help with our colleagues in the member states, and we have had a number of uh, visits with the with all the EU ambassadors to universities. So whenever we travel in Turkey, and we do this every six months. We always make the point wherever we go, um, we visit uh, the university, um, and often we have a, either conversation with the teachers or we have a conversation with the students. And the question that you have just asked uh, comes up um, very often. Uh, and I must say, uh, and to be to be uh, to to really commend my colleagues the, from the member states, the ambassadors, all of them want to help. So if a student has a problem, uh, if there is an impossible situation because you have to go and start your course, otherwise you lose your place, uh, people are willing to help. Um, but as I said, uh, this is this is done on a on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, we understand that Erasmus students need to go, and I, I'm sure that the consulates or the the, um, the people who issue the visas or, or work on the visas fully understand that. But of course, problems can happen, uh, and and then uh, we, we we really try to help. Bu bilgi benim için çok önemliydi bir yüksek öğretim çalışanı olarak. Çok teşekkür ederim. Ee, şimdi konuyu daha farklı bir yere taşımak istiyorum. Ee, Avrupa Birliği Türkiye Delegasyonu olarak Türkiye'de sivil toplum çalışmalarına destek veriyorsunuz. Özellikle eğitim ve gençlik alanlarındaki çalışmalarınız mevcut. Ee, 2014 yılından bu yana da farklı ülkelerde Avrupa Gençlik Forumu'nu düzenliyorsunuz. Ee, benim de sizinle 2018'de tanışma imkanı bulduğum forum oydu. Yani o şekildeydi, muştaydı. Ee, hatırlıyorsunuzdur belki. Gençlik forumlarının sizin evet. için e, bu konuda önemi nedir? Evet. Ee, gençlerin AB'yi tanımasında nasıl bir rolü var? Teşekkür ederim. Let me start with civil society. For us, civil society is extremely important and the European Union is the biggest supporter of civil society uh, around the world. 
uh, we have a very broad definition of civil society. It's not only political or human rights. It's basically any, anything that a citizen is concerned and is get together with other citizens uh, to, to discuss issues or to propose uh, solutions. And the lesson that we have learned in, in Europe is actually part of our, of our constitutional structure. Uh, we have this principle, which is called subsidiarity principle, meaning that you solve problems where they arise. Only if you cannot solve it there, then you move it up to a higher level. So, of course, civil society um, organizations are the ones who deal with everyday problems, but also have uh, answers to these everyday problems. This could be, I know, an environmental issue, where to build a road, where to build a, road, a motorway, how to protect a forest, how to clean a river, how to make sure that wastewater does not um, get into the groundwater, does not uh, uh, contaminate the, the drinking water. So, there are many issues in environment. There are many issues on on the role of women, on, on, on, uh, on how to help women, how to protect women, how to deal with uh, violence. Uh, I mean, again, this is, there, are, there are many human rights organizations, many civil uh, society and human rights organizations dealing with this issue. Then you have um, uh, other human, uh, sorry, other, um, other civil society organizations that deal with culture, with tourism, with uh, archaeology, with uh, uh, protecting archaeological sites. I mean, there are many, many, many different forms of civil society. And, you have in Turkey a vibrant uh, civil society, more than 100,000 organizations with more than a million members. Um, and what we want to do, we want to enable them to take part in decision-making processes. We want to bring, and we have actually programs on that, we want to bring them together with, uh, uh, with uh, local administration, with the governors, with the municipalities, and we want to bring them together with European uh, civil society organizations to exchange views and to, and to, comp and to compare and also youth uh, is a very important component of that. Uh, and the youth forum that you attended in, in Mush uh, was, uh, was, was, I think, very, very um, interesting. Uh, we took the opportunity also to meet many people and to travel around. And we had another one um, uh, this year in, in Bapman, where we, uh, in Eidemann, sorry, where we discussed um, um, the, the risks of, uh, of, of digital engagement, of, of uh, misinformation on the, on the internet. Um, so it's very important to bring people together, and this way again, people from across the country, from from all over all over all over Turkey, many of them had met for the first time. Many had known each other because they had contacts on on the on the, on the internet and so social media. And it was great to to get them together. We we had even a very successful engagement. So there was a couple who pro, who, who proposed, um, and and and and they got married recently in uh, in Kilis. So. You know, even that happens at the youth forum. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's for us a very valuable, a very valuable uh, event by getting people together, by getting to know organizations, youth organizations, and to encourage um, these organizations to, to, to take part in the decision-making process, in debates uh, about life, about politics, about, uh, um, uh, just, uh, about society in, in, in general. And I think it's very important to hear young people, what they think, because after all, um, it's their future and it's their, it's their, it's the development that they, that they have to be very, uh, very, very, very careful about and uh, invest in. Um. Gerçekten çok e, güzel geçiyor dediğiniz gibi Avrupa Gençlik Forumları. Covid sonrasında e, yüz yüze görüşmeyi heyecanla bekliyoruz. Teşekkür ederim yanıtınız için. Şimdi e, yerlerdeki çalışmalardan bahsetmişken ben e, çok farklı bir soru yöneltmek istiyorum. Delegasyona bağlı olarak faaliyet gösteren e, sivil düşün etkiniz gibi e, oluşumlar mevcut. Ve bunlar da yerlerdeki çalışmalara destek sağlıyorlar delegasyon vasıtasıyla. Siz yereldeki sivil toplum kuruluşlarının çalışmaları hakkında ne düşünüyorsunuz? Sizce yeterli çalışmalar yapılıyor mu? Teşekkür ederim. You mean uh, local organizations? You, you mean civil society organizations? Evet, yerel sivil toplum kuruluşları. Ülkemizde faaliyet gösteren. As I said, um, you have a big number of local organizations and we had uh, really uh, the pleasure of meeting many very dedicated and engaged people. 
in different subjects and different you know it is as i said before is ranging this ranges from helping refugees and education and uh, dealing with people with disabilities uh, very focused on culture focused on on certain groups in in, in the country with different cultural backgrounds um, so there are, there are many many different ways of expressing yourself and working in, in local organizations we also uh, a, a, again, in, in, May, in, in, in around the world, we also try to broaden the space in which these organizations can work. We also try to help to have the, the, the, um, a conducive, a positive environment, a, a regulatory environment, uh, because many of these organizations have to register, they have to you know, go through certain procedures. Sometimes they are difficult or complicated, so we also try to, to, to come with good practices and lessons learned from, from other situations. Um, and and this is being often this is being picked up. And as I said, we also try to to um, to encourage the engagement between local organisations and local administration. So we had a project that we finished a little while ago. Um, I think a couple of months. I mean, I think it was just before Corona. We finished a project where we encouraged um, uh, governors and governments in, in Turkey to cooperate with uh, and to engage with uh, with local organisations. I think it was a an interesting project, and a successful project, uh, with the help of the um, of the Minister of Interior. Uh, so, so uh, we we really try to uh, to, to support to so support this uh, this engagement. And as I said, um, people who are faced with problems, who are faced with uh, daily situations, they think about those organizations, uh, these these problems and the situations, and often come up with the answer. So it is. In our view, at least, it is important to allow people to, uh, to, to, to share their views, to share their experience and, and, and come up with suggestions how to address uh, problems that you may face in, in daily life anywhere where you are. Thank you. E, katıldığımız projeler gerçekten çok güzel. E, Avrupa'dan pek çok gençle bir araya geliyoruz. E, farklı sorunların çözümlerinde beraber çalışıyoruz ve bu gerçekten çok güzel bir birbirimizi tanımamıza ve e, farklı projeler üretmemize sebep oluyor. Sizce bu e, yapılan projeler Türk e, gençleri ve Avrupa Birliği'ndeki gençlerin e, tam entegrasyonu sağlıyor mu? Yani tam amacına sizce bu projeler ulaşıyor mu? Teşekkür ederim. Yes, I think we, I, I've seen this that uh, um, Erasmus is a good example um, because in Erasmus you may know that we also can bring um, secondary school kids together. So you have uh, high school kids who have a program, who have a project, uh, who get together with high school kids in other in other in other in other countries. I've seen um, many presentations of of these projects. Uh, so wherever you go and wherever we have a sort of a, a discussion about European projects, this is always the interesting enough the biggest number. So you have small projects, but the number is is is big. So people, uh, I give you I give an example. We were at a school at a school in I think it was in Aydin, uh, a secondary school where this school was cooperating with other schools uh, in in Europe where they were trying uh, to compare programs. You know, I mean, sayings, or, and and find the the equivalent, and find the translation. What what you say in Turkish, what you say in Greek, what you say in Bulgarian, what you say in Italian, uh, with the same meaning of the same of the same proverb. Now, this is a very interesting project because very often this these proverbs they exist um, in, in in in other languages in other countries, but very often they're difficult to translate. Um, so this was a very a very nice uh, project as before um, on, on on other cultural matters like um, like food comparing you know how you prepare certain foods and very often you have um, a type of food that again exists in many different countries but you may have a different approach and we have a different way of preparing it so I've, I've seen many of these projects too or we have I have seen uh, Kids coming together with other kids from from European member states on social projects. I mean, how to deal with kids with learning difficulties, how to deal with kids with uh, uh, with with disabilities. So there are lots of uh, of, of these projects where uh, you may, in the end, you may have 20, 30 kids from from from different countries coming together. So I, I, I think, uh, therefore, 
Um, the answer to your question is yes, these projects achieve these goals. What I hope, however, um, and I really, really, it is also, I think, for the teachers to support that these contacts continue. So they don't, uh, they're not one off contacts, uh, that when you have a project that you come together and then you will never meet again. So I hope that we can also help to, to, to, to strengthen those contacts, to create friendships between people that will last uh, beyond the duration of the, uh, of the project or the support that we are giving. Kesinlikle yani dostluklar çok önemli oluyor. Yani yıllar önceki katıldığım projelerden de kişilerle görüşüyorum. Hatta onların bazı özel durumlarına şahit oluyorum. Bazen düğünlerine evet. davet ediyorlar, farklı etkinliklere davet ediyorlar. Gerçekten kaynaşmak çok keyifli bir şey. Ben diğer soru için sözü Mehmet'e bırakıyorum. Çok teşekkür ediyorum Cavidan. Ben biraz Türkiye'nin Avrupa Birliği'ne katılım sürecinden bahsetmek istiyorum. Bu bağlamda e, Türkiye'nin Avrupa Birliği'ne katılım sürecinde sizce gençlerin e, rolü nedir? From our service, we we see that um, the percentage of people uh, of or well, the percentage among people who really believe uh, in Turkey joining the European Union is the highest among young people. Uh, we have very often when we have meetings uh, you know there are there are questions asked should turkey join the european union and very often you know the answer is is a very very loud yes uh, from from a very large uh, number of people we did this also at the youth forum in uh, that that we that we organized uh, last year we asked this question and uh, and, and everybody in the room uh, with the exception of one or two um, said yes, Turkey should join the, uh, the European Union. So this is a very important uh, part of, um, of of this process. Um, and I, I know from my own country, uh, the strongest supporters in in the 1990s were again young people because they saw a long path, a long future uh, with other European countries, uh, and, and saw it in a very positive way. So the biggest supporters in the refer in my country's referendum. Um, in '94, uh, came from the young people, and the, the, the and, and the most skeptical were the older people. I mean, uh, above, above um, I don't know, retirement age, perhaps. So, um, so young people have this uh, have this have this broader understanding and and wish to be together with other young people from uh, from other countries. So, I think uh, youth uh, in this process, in my view, youth and the business community, in, these two for me play a very important role. And civil society plays a very important role uh, in promoting the, uh, this, the, the, the accession idea in, in Turkey. Teşekkür ediyoruz. Ee, evet söylediğiniz evet. gibi Türkiye'de e, yani yüksek oranda bir genç nüfus var. E, Avrupa'ya da baktığımızda gittikçe genç nüfusu maalesef azalıyor. Ee, bu durumda ileride yani Türk nüfusunun fazla olması Avrupa'da bir istihdam oluşturabilir mi Türk gençleri için? Teşekkür ederim. Uh, certainly, yeah. I mean, there are of course limitations in terms of migration, in terms of visas and, and so on, and work permits. Uh, but I think, that, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, there are agreements between European member states and, uh, uh, and, and Turkey that go back a while, uh, which allows Turkish citizens to, to, to get work permits in, in, in the European Union. So, um, and, and, and as I mentioned at the, at the beginning, um, there is already a very large number of Turkish citizens that work in the European Union in countries like Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, uh, Belgium. Uh, France, you have you have a very a very big uh, Turkish community with uh, also with with young people, and the advantages and the uh, and the strong points that we we mentioned before is uh, a very well educated uh, young community, uh, a very a very uh, outward looking young community, and a young community that is that is very eager to to take opportunities. So. Uh, of course, and I think I think there is a big chance for for for young people to find to find employment and to find uh, opportunities studying or whatever. Given, of course, having having of course to, to take into account the, the respective situation in the countries that you, where you want to go to. I mean, the rules, the regulations, the laws, the 
the immigration laws. I mean, there are many, many different things to, to consider. Um, but Turkey has to, and the young people in Turkey have to offer a lot. Teşekkür ediyorum. E, yavaş yavaş son dakikaların içerisindeyiz e, yanılmıyorsam. E, ben aslında biraz daha kişisel olacak bir soru soracağım. Sayın Büyükelçi e, size göre bir genç nasıl dünya vatandaşı ya da bir e, dünya insanı olabilir? Well, uh, uh, education is, is, of course, the most important thing. Curiosity is, in my view, the next important thing. Uh, traveling, getting around, seeing different things. Uh, I mean, you have many, you have lots of young people, and I spoke to a few yesterday, uh, who spend a lot of time abroad. They learn new languages, new trades, but then they feel very deep, very much rooted to their home country, and they come back and they open a business and start a business. I think you need, in the end, you need both. You need to know where you come from, who you are, what, what, you, what, your, what your background is, but you need to be open to others too. Um, so, uh, so I think that, that for me is, is, is what really is uh, what a world citizen is. It doesn't mean that you are sort of floating around and traveling around and you, you don't know where you belong. I think you should know where you belong, but you should be open to, you know, the, to the entire world and take in the experience that the entire world can offer you for you for wherever where you want to be and who you want to be and what you want to be. Çok teşekkür ediyorum. Ee, Sayın Büyükelçim de eğer izni olursa ben katılımcılarımızdan söz almak isteyenler e, varsa eğer sizlere sorularını yöneltmelerini rica edeceğim tabii ki izniniz olursa. Please, please, please go ahead. Ee, söz almak isteyen arkadaşlarımız varsa lütfen mikrofonlarını ve kameralarını açabilirlerse eğer çok mutlu oluruz. Aslında bu kişiler şeyde e, ellerini kaldırmaya gidiyor ki ben o insana ekrana getirebilirim. Yoksa <gülüyor> gelemezler. Tabii ki lütfen nasıl uygun olacaksa. Evet, nasıl uygun olacaksa. Bir, evet. bir katılımcımız sanıyorum chat kısmından da yazmış. Bulunduğum yer bunun için uygun değil maalesef açamıyorum. E, lütfen siz benim adıma iletir misiniz? Tabii lütfen sorunuzu yazarsanız eğer biz de iletelim. Ben konuşabilir miyim o esnada? Tabii lütfen. Evet, buyurun. Merhabalar benim adım Merve Öztürk. Türk Dili ve Edebiyatı öğretmeniyim. E, biz şu an Avrupa Birliği Finans Fesle ile beraber mültecilere Türkçe dil eğitimi sağlıyoruz. Ee, bu süreç bize Kasım ayı gibi bitirilecek denildi. Bu süreç uzatılacak mı? Ee, devamı olacak mı? En çok merak ettiğimiz konulardan bir tanesi. Teşekkür ediyorum. Yani şöyle, e, dil konusunda yardım yapılacak mı mültecilere? First of all, let me thank you what you have been doing because you, you are, as a teacher, you are contributing to something that is very important, that is to provide opportunity for uh, young Syrians or other refugees that don't speak the language because you can only succeed in a country by speaking the language of the country. So I think you're doing a very important job here. Uh, I've taken part in a number of ceremonies where we handed out certificates, uh, Tomer certificates to, to, to young people who have learned the language. And they all were very proud and they were all told they all told us through learning the language they could help their families they could help find a job or could uh, help uh, it, it would help them to go to on to university so uh, education for us in in our support to, to refugees is extremely important and we are funding um, a number of educational programs not only language courses but also building schools uh, teacher training not only Turkish language but also Arabic language uh, to keep that language alive so there's a lot of there are a lot of activities at, at the, and, and and and some of these projects indeed come to an end but our focus is on education and we are at the moment considering extending this so because we know how important it is how important it is to continue with this education and to allow people to continue uh, language learning so um 
I, I can't give you the exact dates how long it will run after that, but I, I can tell you already now that it will continue after November. So it is not coming to an end. We have we signed uh, a new program with the Ministry of Education uh, last December to extend the uh, the so-called PICTUS uh, program that that we are running, uh, which is also um, providing. Uh, providing salaries for teachers, for, for teachers not only in language but also in other fields. Um, so that will continue for sure. If it, Then we have a number of uh, scholarships that we are providing for specifically for Turkish language and uh, as I said we, we will do everything we can uh, to extend that as well. So we are trying to identify the necessary funding for this uh, as we speak. Yerler Şimşek Hanım, isterseniz kameranızı da açabilirsiniz. First of all, I don't know, maybe you can hear me or not. We hear you perfectly, thank you. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Berger, for this fruitful uh, webinar. Uh, you, as he said, uh, we know that we are living in a digital an era. It's a new exp uh, experience for us, especially for the young generation. Uh, I would like to ask that as a uh, digital generation uh, who lives in a different places, uh, what are the uh, obstacles and the um, uh, new challenges for the uh, competences in uh, this new era for the young generation in terms of uh, of course uh, Erasmus exchange mobility or the um, I don't know um, 2020 uh, horizontal program or the Germanet I mean, in, in, in, if, if you allow me to answer in broader terms I mean first of all you have grown up with uh, you have grown up with uh, with with, the, with in a digital world. I mean, uh, you are certainly a generation. Uh, it, the, I mean, uh, an iPhone, iPad, or whatever equipment is, is, is there's nothing there's nothing difficult for you uh, to learn uh, and to learn quickly. So so that is that is that is uh, one of the one of the comments that we heard yesterday when we talked about um, uh, when we had this digital Europe and digital Turkey uh, meeting. Uh, was a comment I found interesting and the comment was that kids should learn uh, how to use the language of the digital language so uh, so apparently yes we know how to use the equipment and how to use all the tools and the and, and, and the tablets and whatever but the technology behind it the language the coding language behind it is not being taught so this was an interesting suggestion I, I found by by, by this, by the person that, that, that mentioned that, that kids should also learn coding to understand how, how, things, is, how things are being, being done. Um, so I think, first of all, uh, young people have a very, very quick learning curve and either learning languages or learning new technologies. Uh, I, I don't fear that there is any problem with that. And I'm sure uh, they will be much faster than anyone else and, and will be much faster living in that world. What I would I would suggest um, when you do this, don't forget there is another world too. There's a world, um, there's a real world that you can touch. There's a real world that is not flat on a screen. Um, and I think we all have suffered from this in the last uh, three months that everything is in a little on a little screen and a little box on or, or, or and two and two dimensional. So there's still a three dimensional world out there. We should not uh, we should not forget. There's also the, what the, the other thing we should not forget, um, we need relationships. We still need personal relationships, social relationships. Yes, we all have at the moment, uh, we all have to do social distancing. Um, but I think this is physical distancing, not social distancing. We also need to engage and we should not have a, you know, a one-way uh, sort of relationship. So, I mean, in addition to all this technical stuff that I've just been talking about, there are a lot of other sort of human aspects um, that that we should not forget, and and young people should also take in uh, as part of their experience and part of their education. Uh, if I may, I would like to add one comment. If you all uh, allow me to do that, please. Uh, knowing and observing that as an international relations specialist, uh, I saw that 
like uh, young entrepreneurs and other jobs are uh, now it's uh, well known and famous right now but uh, as a politician maybe uh, <laughs> you know more than me or being a teacher or I don't know other jobs are uh, not so famous in the international area so uh, all the young people become through the, these new jobs. So that's why I would like to ask that and I uh, received my um, response. Thank you for that and thank you for all the participation. No, thank you very much. Um, I, I, I think, I think you're, you're, you're quite right in, in, in this observation. So uh, I wish you all the best in, in pursuing this. Um, so uh, I think you have, you, have a, you have a good idea of what you want to do. Ben izninizle sözü devam almak istiyorum. Vaktimizi sanıyorum bir beş dakika kadar açtık. Ben ben sayın büyükelçiye öncelikle bugün bugün pardon bugün bu arada bizlerle olduğu için çok teşekkür etmek istiyorum. Kendisini ve çalışmalarını yakinen takip etmeye de devam edeceğiz. Hem derneğim hem ekip arkadaşlarım adına çok teşekkür ediyorum. E, bu süreci kolaylaştıran e, delegasyon iletişim ekibine, e, çok değerli iletişim ekibine ayrıca teşekkür etmek istiyorum. Sözlerimi bu şekilde noktalamayı e, ümit ediyorum. Mehmet, uh, thank you very much. Also, uh, Cevidan, thank you for for for for your uh, introduction early on. It was a great. It was a great opportunity to and those who listen to your questions, which are very interesting. Uh, I hope you can you can come up with more questions, and we can have another event like this where uh, me or or our colleagues will be very happy to take part. And I'm sure also other ambassadors from the European Union um, uh, member states to, uh, take, would would love to take part in this and answer and answer these questions. So thank you, all the best, uh, good luck at your studies or your jobs or whatever you do, um, and I hope um, we will have an opportunity again to to to meet face to face and have our cup of coffee. <gülüyor> en büyük arzumuz, temennimiz bu. Duyduğumuza çok sevindik gerçekten bunu duyduğumuza. <gülüyor> çok teşekkür ederiz. Good evening. İyi akşamlar. İyi akşamlar dileriz. Evet. Sağ olun evet. tekrardan. Good evening. Bye bye.